I'm joined by Josh Ernest, White House Press Secretary under Mr. Obama and an MSNBC political analyst. Good to see you, Josh. How are you? Cheers. Just have a mic on. Josh? Up, oh, we're getting him re-miked right now. Uh, that's Josh Ernest, who, by the way, I worked with for two and a half years in the Obama White House. Have we got your mic on yet, Josh? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Fantastic. So happy to hear you. I, I want to go back to something that you were saying. And, and look, it's about the president and his true commitment to community organizing. It's something that goes back to his very earliest uh, public involvement. Having said that, I've spent a lot of time talking to Democratic activists since the election, Josh, and I, I do sort of get this sense that while they agree with him 100% on what he said today about getting involved, there's a second part of that, which is a complete and total disenfranchisement with government. And I'm not just talking about Donald Trump. I, I hear more and more Democrats echoing what I've heard from Republicans that Washington has failed them. The government has failed them. And they're turning to community activism because they think there's no one else out there who's mm -hmm. going to accomplish the things they're going to do. And I'm, I'm curious about your take on that and if you know the president's take on that, the former president's take. Well, listen, Chris, I think that there's no denying that there's a, a immense frustration with the kind of dysfunction that we've seen in Washington, not just over the last 100 days, but over the last several years. There is a sense that our politics is broken, and a lot of that is rooted in the, uh, in the legislative branch, where uh, Congress seems to, uh, to struggle even doing the most basic things, and uh, that may be on full display and in the bright spotlight later this week as uh, Republicans in Congress try to figure out how to keep the government open. Uh, so there's no denying that people all across the country in both parties uh, are immensely frustrated with uh, what they see coming out of Washington, the extent that anything is happening in Washington. So uh, the, the one silver lining of that is I do think that that has put the onus on more people to take responsibility for leading and bringing about change in their own communities. And that's a good thing. That's certainly true of local elected officials. We've seen more mayors across the country step up and assume responsibility and a larger profile uh, for making some arguments about things that they believe in. But we've also seen uh, more people decide to get engaged. And in some cases, that's uh, a march, like we saw the large uh, March for Science here in Washington and in cities uh, all across the country over the weekend. Uh, but that's true as as people uh, roll up their sleeves and get involved in their communities to figure out, uh, let's not wait for a piece of legislation to be passed in Washington, D.C. to improve our schools. Let's get involved and let's volunteer in our schools and our communities and figure out what we can do to make sure that kids uh, in our community are getting a good education. Uh, that's ultimately a good thing. The more that people are involved in this project uh, of running the greatest country in the world, the stronger we're going to be. Uh, yeah, agreed, but there still is presumably uh, an important role for government to play. And I think that there obviously are going to be people today, Josh, and you know that they're going to be disappointed that he didn't go after Donald Trump, even though all of you who have been close to him have been signaling that that was not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wonder, you know, I was there. Uh, you were there as well. I think it was the last press conference uh, in December um, th that he gave. Uh, and, and he said, you know, he'll speak up when things really are egregious, essentially. What That's do right. you think would motivate him to get back involved in the public debate in a way he's not willing to do right now? Well, Chris, after the last eight years, the president doesn't relish the, the prospect of getting back into the day-to-day -day fights that characterize governing uh, the United States of America in the 21st century. The president doesn't have much interest in you know, weighing in on the tax reform proposal that the Trump folks are promising to release later this week. He doesn't have much of an interest in weighing in on what steps Republicans in Congress can take to keep the government open. He spent the last eight years doing it. It's somebody else's turn to do that, to the, to do that now. I think what would motivate President Obama to re-engage in the political debate is if we saw the federal government start to cross some clear red lines in terms of long observed norms and values uh, that, uh, you know, frankly, I think that we started to take for granted. So one example that President Obama has himself cited in the past is uh, if we saw the federal government begin to use the information that was submitted by dreamers. Uh, to round them up and send them out of the country, uh, that would represent uh, a broken promise to those dreamers who was, you know, we made a promise to them that they would, that, that, that that information that we collected from them would not be used for enforcement purposes. Uh, it also would be a, a pretty stark departure from the values of this country uh, that signal that, uh, that people who want an opportunity to succeed here and are willing to follow the law and make a substantial positive contribution to their community uh, should be given a chance. Uh, 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.